question. We'll be given one minute to read the question and then I'll ask you related questions. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering this yeah, session yes. and not mistaken, kindly tell yes. me what are you looking at on the left hand side picture? Uh, what kind of image is this, first of all? Uh, number A is a uh, uh, tibial uh, 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 pet uh, petella, and number uh, B is a uh, uh, the end. Number B is TBL um, is anterior. It's, yes, insertion uh, of something. Yes. TBL is anterior. Uh, should I uh, say the uh, original insertion also? No, just identify. Oh, oh okay. Okay, and uh, number uh, C is. Uh, lateral malleolus and uh, number 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 D is uh, tendo. Uh, sorry, ma'am, number D. I can't uh, okay. Can remember you this. Please tell me how many uh, compartments there are in the leg. There are compartments. Okay. Um, there are two compartments that is, uh, one is anterior compartment and superficial posterior, and deep posterior and lateral compartment. Okay, can you please tell me the number, uh, the muscles in each compartment, please? Yes, in anterior compartment, in anterior compartment, their muscles are tibial is anterior, it's also homosis longus, longus and perineus tertius, in the and extensor distal longus as well. Okay, what is the what is the nerve uh, of anterior compartment? A nerve is the perineal nerve. Okay, good. What are the vessels which are also present in the anterior compartment? The vessels. Yes, please. In the vessels, anterior tibial artery. Very good, anterior tibial vessels. All right. Can you please tell me, yes, uh, muscles and the nerves of the lateral and the posterior compartment as well, please? Okay, in the lateral compartment, the muscles are uh, perineus longus and tarsus. Uh, Perineus longus and perineus brevis. And uh, nerve supply is uh, by nerve supplied by superficial perineal. Yes. And uh, artery, artery supply is perineal artery. Yes. And the smooth spinous vein as well. And the posterior compartment? Why muscles of posterior compartment are divided or present in two layers? Uh, present, uh, sorry, ma'am. Okay, uh, just tell me the contents of posterior compartment, please. Okay, the muscles are superficial component, superficial uh, posterior compartments are gastrocnemius, soleus, and plantaris, and uh, deep compartments are flexor hallucis longus, flexor digitorum longus, tibial is posterior, and another is uh, anastron is popliteus. Popliteus, yes, and the nerve of posterior compartment is? Tibial division. Uh, sorry, right, uh, sorry, sorry, I can't get you. Uh, the nerve of the posterior compartment is tibial division oh, of the sciatic nerve. Okay, and nerve supply is tibial nerve and yes. blood supply is posterior tibial nerve. Yes. Okay, can you please tell me uh, what is what are the boundaries of the popliteal fossa? Because if we just move up here, we can see yes. something. Yes. So if you can tell me. 
popliteal fossa is the um, above the uh, uh, the uh, spiro there is a, medially yes yes superior me superior medially there is a semi uh, membranous and semi tendinous very good and uh, and uh, head of uh, medial head of gastrocnemius below and okay. laterally above is biceps biceps yes. femoris yes and below is yes below is lateral head of gastrocnemius and in and medial uh, roof is, is also plantaris as well deeply yes and yes, roof uh, is another muscle is plantaris roof yes. is formed by superficial and uh, superficial and diffusa and floor is pretty surface of the femur good what are the contents of the popliteal fossa Contents are uh, comminuted nerve, tibial nerve, uh, popliteal artery and vein. Yes. And some lymph nodes. What type of joint is a knee joint, please? Knee joint is com uh, complex uh, hinge, hinge type of complex joint. Synovial type of the modified hinge joint. Yes. Mm. Can you please tell me what are the structures which strengthen? the integrity of the knee joint or strengthen the knee joint or Some provide the mass. stability to the knee joint yes uh, what, uh, there are not uh, there are many things okay so can you name few uh, strengthen um, by ligaments yes which ligaments quickly uh, so sorry, there are many sky think you know it medial, so there yeah, are menisci and then there are ligaments so there are cruciate ligaments and there are collateral ligaments you know th these and what yes, else yes, yes what else think and uh, it, there is vasti muscle into which there is patella stability there is tibial tibial spine and there is knee capsule as well right yes ma'am Yes, you already know that. Okay, if you can please tell me the contents of the knee uh, patella, uh, popliteal fossa. I'm sorry, superficial to deep. Which structure is deepest? Uh, so most of it is common perineal nerve, then tibial nerve, and then popliteal artery. Popliteal artery is the deepest. Popliteal okay. vein, then popliteal artery. Yes, popliteal vein and then artery. Okay, if you can uh, please kindly come on the right hand side image. What kind of image is this, and what is it showing to you? How can you interpret it? Number A is a uh, popliteal. Number A is popliteal artery. Okay, and B please. And number uh, B is a uh, let. Medial side. Uh, the number B is tibial. What is the name of this image? What are you looking for? Why would you ask for this image? This is the AMR uh, uh, of a uh, vessel. vessel. Okay. So what is B and C and D, please? C and um, um, number C is a perineal artery. And, uh, sorry, ma'am, I can't identify this. Okay. All right. Can you please tell me the structures which pass behind the lateral malleolus? One ligament you identified or one tendon. Can you please tell me what are other structures which pass behind, if you can see, the lateral malleolus. So behind, behind the lateral. Yes. Behind the lateral malleolus, uh, it is about... Um, All the structures uh, which pass through the malleoli, the same on the medial and the lateral side, or on the both sides, are, the, are they the same? Or is there any difference? Yes, ma'am, there are some differences. Yes, yes. And this, case, yes, pass through any retinoculum below or above. Is there any, if you can tell me the details, please? 
Can you see yes, any yes, retinal sir. coulomb attached here? Anything? Yes, ma'am. In the yes. extensor retinal, extensor retinal coulomb. Okay. Can you please tell me the attachment of it? Last question. Uh, in case of uh, medial me medial malleolus. Okay. You can tell me tomorrow. Thanks. Uh, Ma'am, uh, could you please ask me the question, the last question? Actually, I, I don't understand this. Sorry, I asked you, are there any difference? This is like lateral malleoli, right? And on the other side is medial malleoli. There are certain structures which pass behind the medial malleoli. These are very commonly asked. But I asked you structures which pass through or behind the lateral malleoli. So if the structures on both sides are the same or different, if they are different, what, what are the differences? And do they pass directly or is there any, any retina plumb underneath which they pass? Okay. Because these is, will be passing to the, to the soul. Uh, lateral ones are passing to the soul and the medial ones are passing above to the dorsum of the foot. So what is the difference? Of course, there are difference. Different tendons and um, structures are being passed. But I want to know if they are passing below any retina plumb or there is no retina plumb, there's nothing. They're just uh, lying here and then they're passing behind. So you will find out and you'll tell me tomorrow, right? Okay, okay ma'am, sure. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I'm starting the timer and here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering this surgical and ostomy station, kindly tell me, what are you looking at? What is A and what is B, please? We're looking at the uh, bones of the foot, ma'am. Okay. Our teacher, uh, A is uh, uh, medial aspect and uh, B is uh, lateral view of the foot. Okay, can you please help me and identify number 13, please, in the picture A? Number 13 is uh, calcaneum. Okay, what is 18, please, in picture A, please? Sustentate tally. And uh, if you can look above here, it says one. What is that, please? It's tuberosity, I think. Can you identify number nine over here, please? Number nine is talus, medial uh, tubercle of the talus. Okay. Can you please tell me, uh, right, how many, uh, okay, what is number 10 over here? Cuneiform, ma'am. It's a medial cuneiform. Okay. How many cuneiforms are there? Can you please tell me and how they are arranged? What are the medial Yes. Okay. Medial intermediate lateral cuneiform yes. and uh, one cuboid. Three cuneiforms and one cuboid. Yes. Uh, these cuneiforms are arranged with the uh, uh, in alignment with the metatarsals. Okay. So medial is with the uh, base of the first metatarsal. Yes. Likewise, the 
middle and lateral goes to the second and third metatarsal and proximally uh, medial and lateral cuneiform will be attached to the uh, navicular okay what type of bone is navicular bone um, i'm sorry me what is this 19 please how many arches there are in the foot and there are uh, medial on these arches yes please there are medial longitudinal arch and lateral longitudinal arch and medial is mainly formed by the uh, calcaneum uh, talus and uh, cuneiforms and whereas uh, lateral will be mainly formed by the calcaneum and cuboid there is another uh, another arch and the well, fourth and fifth metatarsal transverse arch uh, what are the bones yeah. which form the transverse arch transverse arch uh, is uh, mainly formed by the cuneiform and the uh, cuboid bone cuneiform and the cuboid okay includes navicular and the ligaments as well okay right can you uh, yes you told me the bones involved in these arches can you all right yeah i can ask you to would you be able to identify or okay in the next image if we can if you can look at this image c d and e and if you can identify these circled uh, structures please Yes, well, uh, these uh, these are the ligaments which have been highlighted. Okay. Uh, medial uh, that is the C will be the uh, delta. C will be the deltoid ligament. All right. Okay. Can you please tell me? Uh, yes, attachment uh, of the deltoid ligament to begin with. Superiorly, it will be uh, tibia, uh, medial malleolus of the tibia. Yes. Inferiorly, it will be attached to the. Uh, calcaneum uh, and calcaneum and the talus no five structures count and, and then it, tell me all it, five of them inferiorly and, and it also attaches spring inferiorly uh, talus uh, calcaneum and uh, spring ligament anteriorly to the tuberosity of the navicular bone to the spring ligament to the neck of the talus to the sesquiventriculum talli and to the body of the talus five Yes. Okay. Why deltoid ligament is called deltoid ligament? Is there any other name to this ligament? Collateral ligament. Okay. Can you uh, tell me what are the joints that you can see, and uh, what are the joints which are present on the foot, and what are they articulating with? Joints in the foot. Yes, please. all the all the joints that you can mention or you can recall a foot, foot uh, mainly uh, formed by this ankle joint okay then which joint is subtalar joint or talo calcaneal joint it's in synovial joint yes uh, in type of synovial joint and it What is uh, mainly articulation by the yes tibia and fibula with the talus it movements it has in a plantar flexion and then no a, it's it uh, articulates extra, like in fear surface of the body of the talus articulates with the superior surface of the calcaneus calcaneum yes and the superiorly tibia and fibula fibular bones of yes. the ma malleolus uh, now it yeah. is responsible for the foot 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 dorsiflexion and the plantar flexion inversion and inversion of the foot they are involved in inversion and diversion yes. inversion and diversion and it's a plain synovial joint okay can you please tell me about the talo calcaneo navicular joint what type of joint it is which movements are present and what surfaces are articulating 
Talo Kalki Navikla joint, uh, basically, uh, it's a uh, uh, ball and socket type of joint. Gliding and rotatory, okay. Yes. Uh, gliding and rotatory movements formed by the talus uh, uh, and the calculum and the navicular bones. Yes. Mainly, uh, is, uh, inversion and eversion also can take place along with the gliding and rotations. All right. Okay. Can you please tell me about the calcaneo cuboid joint? What kind of joint is this? Uh, calcaneo cuboid will be a, a saddle joint. Hmm? Uh, it's plain synovial joint, but what uh, what movements are present on it? The first, yeah. Okay, you uh, tell me tomorrow. Please uh, tell me what is... the same. Uh, likewise, inversion, inversion, inversion and inversion. inversion. Yes, mainly. and circum circumduction as well, some to some extent. Okay, what is mid tarsal joint of Chopar? Mid tarsal uh, joint of Chopar will be formed by the this joint. Uh, it has a mainly calcaneum and the cuboid along with the uh, talus and navicular joints. Okay. They form uh, mainly the uh, mid foot and the rear foot joint. Okay. Can you please tell me what are the muscles which perform the action of inversion and eversion, please? Um, eversion is mainly by uh, peroneus longus and brevis, whereas inversion is mainly by the uh, uh, tibia, uh, not tibia, sorry. Yes, are, uh, anterior and posterior. Tibialis anterior and posterior, yes. along with flexor halicis longus. Okay, what are the movements which are present or which are allowed at the ankle joint? Ma'am, uh, ankle joint, there will be inversion, eversion, and fl uh, dorsiflexion, plantar yes. flexion, circumflexion. Yes. Okay, can you please tell me uh, ankle joint is most stable in dorsiflexion position? Why? Yeah, ma'am. Uh, here there will be complete articulation of the uh, talus will be taking place. And okay. when compared to the uh, plantar flexion, yes. In plantar flexion, there will be uh, the articulation of the talus is deficient. Okay, what type of joint is inferior talofibular joint? Uh, sorry, ma'am. Syndesmosis. Uh, what is okay. associated injury in syndesmotic fracture? Associated injury. Yes. Fracture lateral milialis. That is the associated injury that can occur. Right. Uh, yeah. If you can tell me about the arteries of the foot. Last question. Or second yes, ma'am. Arteries of the main artery of the foot, mainly anterior tibial artery, continues as a dorsal spidis artery. Uh, yes. And uh, the posterior tibial artery will give us to medial and lateral plantar arteries. Okay. And these form the arches in the foot in the plantar aspect. This dorsal spidis artery uh, at the base of the uh, between the base of the first and second metatarsal, it dips down into the uh, plantar aspect to forms the uh, arch of the foot. And that will be. Uh, Proceeded uh, distally by medial and lateral plantar arteries. Okay, last question. Please tell me what are the muscles which makes the tendon Achilles? Ma'am, tendon Achilles is mainly found by the uh, gastronomius and the soleus. Okay, can you please identify the tendons on the dorsum of the foot? Which tendon uh, is seven? seven? Flexor halicis longus. Extensor. Don't, uh, this oh, is sorry, sorry, time. sorry, ma'am. Extensor halicis longus. Yes. Uh, Four, please. These are extensor distorium. Brevis, yes. Right. 16, please. 8, 7, 16, 16. Yes, here. Uh, yes. It's a it's small. A extensor it's a distorium. Dorsal, dorsal and social. Right. Okay, uh, in which shape. one is a tibialis anterior, if you can identify? Tibialis. Yeah, it is 70, 50, 17, ma'am. Yes. Which is 18? 18 it's the tuberculosis of the base of the fifth metatarsal. And which muscle or tendon inserts here? Yes, ma'am. One second. Excellent. Which one? Perineus. 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 Yes. Perineus. Okay. 
this is important like you should know this and which one is okay. six did i ask you six no hello sisters extensive hello yes okay ma'am six sections also please here is your question right so if you have read and understood considering your surgical pathology station kindly tell me after reading the stem what are your provisional diagnosis for this patient uh, ma'am uh, i am dealing with the uh, uh, men syndrome one as uh, the patient is having hyperparathyroidism uh, as well as a uh, uh, pancreatic tumor ma'am which leading to uh, diarrhea vomiting and epigastric pain okay what does this uh, hyper enhancing pancreatic lesion means ma'am this ma'am this can be a islet cell tumor or it okay. can be a uh, zollinger ellison syndrome ma'am very good how would you confirm your diagnosis what more ma'am i can go for a ma'am i can uh, i can advise for a ct scan ct scan whole abdomen and i can go for a fnsc of the uh, thyroid gland ma'am okay one ct scan uh, ct contrast was already done you lost for another one ma'am okay. uh, uh can you define ma'am i can go for ma'am ma'am uh, it is increase in the uh, it is in, uh, it is increase uh, increase in the number of uh, proliferative cells ma'am proliferating cells okay Uh, which can to, be due to in, in response to increase in the uh, increase in the demand or it can be in response to uh, uh, increase other stimuli uh, okay other what, stimuli yes what are the what are the features what are the microscopic features or the structures that you'll see uh, or will be present in hyperplasia ma'am there can be hyper uh, hyper uh, chromatemia there can yes. be hyper uh, there will be there will be uh, uh, increase in the number of nuclei there will be increase in the cellularity and uh, there will be uh, this is uh, i can come to this okay. question later ma'am right. all right can you please tell me uh, what kind of condition is men one syndrome that you mentioned ma'am uh, men one syndrome is uh, uh, associated with uh, the hyperparathyroidism which is due to uh, parathyroid adenoma and it can it is associated with the pituitary uh, pituitary yes. adenoma which secrete uh, prolactin is it autosomal dominant or yes, autosomal recessive how is it yes ma'am it is it is auto it is autosomal dominant ma'am and chromosome number 11 gene melanin okay what are the other genes uh, which are involved in this condition ma'am uh, men syndromes are associated with ret gene or ret gene ma'am on chromosome number 10 ma'am okay uh how would you confirm your uh, diagnosis through biochemical because you said the patient can have pituitary adenoma so would that affect uh, biochemical diagnosis in any yes ma'am if the patient have a pituitary a pituitary adenoma ma'am it can yes. have a increased prolactin level it can have a increased prolactin level it can has a increase in growth hormone level and it can have a corti increase in cortisol level which is uh, in uh, which is uh, uh, non respondent to uh, in, uh, glucose tolerance test ma'am okay can you mention few other conditions which can also lead to hypoglycemia or non tolerance to blood uh, 
sugar level or blood glucose level ma'am addisonian crisis can lead to the same and and uh, if there is increase in uh, production of glucagon yes glucagon ma'am uh, glucagon uh, if there is increase in the level of glucagon okay any other you can recall okay no, what is the clinical picture uh, when a patient has uh, insulinoma would present with ma'am patient patient will be having a, a, a cerebral confusion patient will be having confusion patient will be having a very low uh, uh, glucose level yes, as low as 20 to 30 mg per yes, day 2.5 mm per day as low as less than to yes ma'am uh, yes and Uh, which responds to which responds to uh, uh, giving ex, uh, exogenous glucose, ma'am. Okay. Uh, in regard to or with regard to insulin, and there is the increase yes. increased insulin, insulin, and there is the in, uh, increase in insulin degradation product. Yes, with regard to uh, insulinoma, there are three genes mutations. Uh, can you name those, please? Ma'am, I will come to this question later, ma'am. Okay. All right. Can you tell me, uh, in case of insulinoma, what are the blood tests that you can ask for to confirm your diagnosis? Ma'am, I will check for uh, blood blood insulin level, ma'am, and uh, I will uh, check for blood sugar level as well as uh, uh, insulin degradation products, ma'am. Okay. if this uh, according to you is man one syndrome so what is uh, or what are the what are the conditions associated with man two syndrome how would you differentiate ma between the two ma'am man two syndromes are associated with the pheochromocytoma and medullary cell carcinoma along with the uh, hyperplasia of parathyroid gland and man two b syndrome are associated with the uh, marfanoid feature and mucosal lesion along with the man two a syndrome man two a feature ma'am okay compared to okay what is the oncogene mutation for men2 syndrome ma'am in men2 syndrome there will be a red gene mutation which is on chromosome number 10 ma'am so you said the same for men1 okay what is the mode of inheritance of men2 syndrome or ma'am autosomal dominant ma'am okay uh, if a patient presents okay what would you like to exclude before you will go ahead for the surgery for mental patient ma'am uh, i have to rule out pheochromocytoma ma'am yes. because it can lead Why? to intraoperative hyper uh, yes. emergency crisis ma'am hypertensive yes. emergencies yes so uh, what is the mode of diagnosis for pheochromocytoma ma'am i can uh, uh, i can uh, uh, diagnose it by the blood mark apply the blood markers the increase yes. in the Uh, like met meta metaminephrines, and I can go with the urine markers, uh, metaminephrines and uh, vinyl mendelic acid, ma'am. Levels of vinyl mendelic acid. Yes, and metaminephrines. All right. And metaminephrines, ma'am. All right. And by imaging, ma'am, uh, by ultrasound, CT, CT, and uh, PET scan, ma'am. Yeah, that you can also do. Right. Uh, I all right. I wanted to ask you. Right, if uh, just suppose there is a patient, most commonly a lady, uh, she was cycling. All of a sudden, uh, she felt pain in her thigh, and uh, when she was examined, you realized that she has a fracture of the femur shaft. So, can you? What uh, pathology can you think of? What might have might have happened to her? It is a. Ma'am, it is a pathological fracture, ma'am, yes. which can be due to uh, any uh, lytic lesion in the bone, which yes. can be due to uh, any uh, hyperparathyroidism, which can be due to steroid intake, uh, and uh, which can be due to uh, uh, any uh, bony lesion, ma'am. Okay, can you mention few other conditions which can mimic the similar symptoms? Or can uh, occur as it is. Uh, ma'am. Thank uh, you. Ma'am, it can be multiple myeloma. It can be okay. osteoporosis. It can. 
yes ma'am it can be paget disease it can be bone tumors ma'am and uh, it can be uh, uh, hyperparathyroidism brown tumor ma'am yes good well then no questions i could have uh, enjoyed i said no i can't buy this he said wala you and here is your question right so if you have read and understood considering the critical care scenario kindly tell me how would you manage this patient now <clears throat> okay i will manage the patient by um, his protocol and as the patient by abcd in mnr <clears throat> i to want to talk with the patient if patient is uh, asks uh, if you can talk and then air is clear then i will give 100% oxygen and patient upright position and um, i will uh, assess the circulation uh, and uh, see the breathing is okay then i will assess the circulation if uh, i will open to at good level cannula and uh, upright uh, position yes Yes. Then you check the oxygen. Yes. Uh, yes, I will give the 100% oxygen. Uh, then I will uh, open the white blood uh, cannula and uh, take some blood sample uh, for ABG and uh, cross matching uh, and uh, other uh, tests like liver function test and uh, say full blood count. Uh, then uh, I uh, stop the injection of epidural anesthesia and uh, uh, check yes. it. It is cause uh, cause for uh, hypovolemic shock or uh, epidural anesthesia. Uh, and uh, i call my uh, consultant operative consultant and anesthesia consultant and uh, i if it is due to epidural anesthesia then i will start some inotrope like epinephrine phenylephrine okay. and uh, atropine uh, in your also, opinion what might be the what might be the cause for this patient's current condition Mm, patient has a uh, hypotension with uh, bradycardia uh, and uh, respiratory uh, saturation is poor mm. so it may be due to high uh, epidural uh, block i also consider okay. as uh, due to it may be uh, yes mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean by high epidural block when yeah, is it considered high yes uh because a patient is a lobectomy in the thorax uh, so it is uh, used in the uh, thoracic region uh, like t3 t4 level yes. um, so it is yes. it is a high uh, it is a considered the high epidural anesthesia okay what else can be the cause <clears throat> it also may be due to the hypovolemic shock uh, due to uh, so postoperative dose, hypovolemic shock. dosage being given could be more type of medication then age yeah, high yeah. can wait in the posture of the yeah, yeah. yes yes ma'am yes, yes. yes. So, uh, right. it occurs yes okay. it occurs to uh, uh, depends on efficacy of epidural anesthesia is due to age height and weight also level of injection dose or uh, anti type of medication also uh, if we uh, add some uh, vasoconstriction and uh, constriction that will also affect and also posture of the patient can you give me three advantages or three benefits of giving epidural to this patient for this uh, patient uh, in in this patient uh, i said lobectomy so it is a, a long procedure you know, so uh, it is a helpful and it also uh, act as a post operative analgesic and uh, it also uh, help to patient uh, to prevent a uh, dvt uh, and also uh, improve outcome of the patient all right good okay helps in like uh, lung fissure as well like post operative all right good okay can you please tell me what are the levels which are used for different surgeries when they have to give epidural block 
Can you mention two systemic effects of epidural analgesia? Uh, madam, uh, first of all, uh, hypotension uh, due to uh, uh, alcohol uh, will block of the sympathetic uh, overflow causes vasodilation that causes hypo, uh, uh, hypotension. And also uh, due to reduce, uh, reduce the cardiac output uh, that lead to uh, uh, re functional residual capacity also. And uh, also it is uh, causes uh, uh, attenuate the stress uh, response of the surgery. Okay. Can and you also please... prevent the DVT. Yes, good. Thank you. Can you please tell me what are the types of inotropes that you can suggest for this patient? This patient is hypotensive and bradycardic. Okay, I will. Uh, uh, I will uh, use ep epinephrine and uh, phenylephrine. Also, okay, you why? can also use clonotrop like atropine. Yes. Uh, to uh, increase the blood pressure. Blood pressure. Yes. Why? To raise the blood pressure and patient is bradycardia. Yes. And also, heart rate should be uh, increased. Okay. Uh, once, uh, if you can give me a satisfactory answer, once giving or once suggesting inotropes, what are the important things that you have to consider? Not just raise the blood pressure or raise mm -hmm. the heart rate. What is more important? What is the, in other terms, if you can tell mm -hmm. me the definition. Best dilation, madam. Best of, be yes. ट blood okay. pressure and saturation saturation of the patient saturation level level yes. of the saturation yes and the patient is uh, oligo 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 and uh, the chance of kidney ak yes. kidney failure yes patient is already undergoing thread so once you are giving uh, inotropes mm -hmm. what are the complications or what can happen what would you look out for I mean, okay. cardiac failure respiratory uh, problem cardiac also arrest. respiratory failure and uh, patient yes yeah, rest if you have given more okay can you tell me why you have not gone out and given the spinal anesthesia to this patient why epidural block yeah uh, because uh, yes 
uh, first of all, uh, in uh, spinal anesthesia, uh, it will only give, uh, uh, it cannot give in long procedure uh, cases. Uh, uh, it is lobectomy, uh, so then a uh, long surgery, so it will be helpful. And also, uh, analgesic uh, purpose, uh, it is also helpful uh, for post operative analgesic. So, spinal uh, versus uh, epidural is the best. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, here is your question. In exam, just roughly nine minutes will be given to you. Yes. Yes, next. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, are you ready, Doctor? So, if you're ready and understood, considering the clinical communication skills section, we can see. Hello, I'm Doctor Muhammad. I'm calling from Egg Downtown Hospital. I'm working with Mr. Man. I'm going to speak with the health consultant. May I confirm who I'm speaking to, please? Yes. Um, yes, I'm the consultant uh, uh, for today. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I have a patient who had 20 years old who had RTA. Now she's conscious, but uh, his GCS is 15. Okay, we did uh, examine the patient using ABCD approach according to ATL's protocol. And also we did X-ray, which would show that he has tibia fibular fracture in the left. And also uh, there is absence of subdistal buses. Okay, also we did abdominal ultrasound, it shows in the abdominal collection. Okay, so uh, what about um, the blood test? I need investigation. Uh, yes, it shows that he has uh, increased in C-reactive protein. For the other investigation, I don't have this information right now, but I will check and call you back. Okay. What is your plan of management? 
Yeah, Okay. First of all, I will manage using ATLs to call using ABCD approach. Then after that, I will reduce and immobilize the fractures. And also I will consult the, I will call the consultant and the vascular surgeon and the orthopedic surgeon. Then uh, this patient has intra-abdominal collection. Then I will ask for CT abdomen and pelvis. And also patient need double scan. And also as the patient is un unconscious right now, I will use T brain. Okay, uh, what will you do before sending the patient to operation theater? I will call the vascular surgeon and the orthopedic. Uh, uh, how will you fix this fracture? Okay. First of all, I will reduce and splint the fractures. I will use uh, Thomas splint. Okay. After that, I will call my senior and call the orthopedic surgeon. All right. Um, so what would you do for the wound? Uh, patients has, uh, might have combatment syndrome. So uh, as the patient, he has extremely uh, pain in his left thigh. So I will do a duplex scan. And also for the operation, I will do one dressing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So? Yeah. Uh, okay. So the next question is, uh, why are you calling me now? I'm calling you to update about uh, to inform you about this case because you are the head trauma consultant. And okay. you might need overnight surgery. Ah, yes. As the patient mm -hmm. might need surgery overnight. Okay. And uh, so where's the most urgent right now? The most urgent as the patient he has uh, absent pulses in the left foot. So there might be risk of ischemia. So the vascular injury is the most mm -hmm. urgent. Okay. Uh -huh. So is the patient wearing a C collar? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. uh, is the patient dehydrated? I don't have this information right now, but I will check and if call you later. All right. Uh, so. Why did general surgeon ask for ultrasound you know, when they felt abdomen was normal? Actually, the abdomen shows that it has uh, abdominal distension and tenderness and also an ultrasound show intra-abdominal collection. So yeah, the patient okay. might need laboratory. Okay. Um, so um, what's the plan right now? Sorry, uh, so what's the next investigation that you want to do for the patient's lab? Yeah. I will ask for the routine investigations, uh, of course, and also I will do CT abdomen and pelvis, and also CT brain, and also double C scan. Mm, what about the patient, for the patient's lab, any investigation more? For the patient leg, yes, I will do ankle breaker in text on bed firstly, then I will arrange for double scan. Okay. Um, so, um, uh, I think that's all. Uh, no, who are the people you will involve uh, in the surgery? Uh, the vascular surgeon and the orthopedic surgeon and the general surgeon. Mm -hmm. You will involve the and patient the, uh, staff and also yes, and the anesthetist and, and plastic surgeon as well. Why would you involve the plastic surgeon? Uh, because of the tibial fibular fractures. So, so. And? and the abrasion on the abdomen. What would be the involvement of general sur surgeon in this case? 
because of the patient might need laparotomy as it has intra-abdominal collection. Yes, and the wound and the compartment syndrome. Okay, how would you manage the free fluid in the abdomen? I will, firstly, I will examine the patient if there's any signs of uh, peritonitis and the patient become uh, peritonic. Also, I will do serial abdomen examinations if there is any sign of peritonitis, so patient will might need laparotomy. Okay, can you sum it up what you have been discussing with the consultant? Okay, for uh, first of all, this uh, a patient who had uh, twenty years old has RTA, has TB fibrofracture, fracture, and also had abdominal collections, and also bustless foot. So uh, first of all. I will, the most urgent thing here, I will call the vascular surgeon because of the leg and also the general surgeon for the intraabdominal collections. And you'll find out about the patient's dehydration and if patient is wearing free color. Yes, uh, and the investigation, then I will call you back. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Just two seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one. Right, good. Thanks. Okay, now feedback. Right.